Today's episode of This Week in Startups is brought to you by SourceBits.com. Visit www.sourcebits.com to begin your mobile app development journey. And by Liquid Web, a leader in managed web hosting since 1997. Hey everybody, it's Jason Calacanis here for This Week in Startups. We've got an amazing show today. It's our first ever This Week in Startups Berlin meetup. We're going to hear five amazing startups from Berlin, which is really becoming a hotbed of technology and startups uh, on the program today. And Tyler Crowley is going to give us some amazing, amazing, non-offensive, non-politically incorrect insights, I hope. I can't stick with us. Stick with us. Don't interrupt the cold open. <laughs> It's all about man. They said money is the root of all evil. What? Funny how it feeds my people. Yeah. We ain't gonna live like equals until we get the money, spend the money, and defeat you. Yeah. Money is the root of all evil. What? Funny how it feeds my people. Yeah. We ain't gonna live like equals until we get the money, spend the money, and defeat you. Introducing the newest members of the This Week in Startups producer program. Ah, uh, hello, hello, everybody. It's This Week in Startups. Wow, that graphic swung in there so beautifully. Um, hey, we've got an amazing show for you today. All kinds of different cities around the world have become technology hubs, and we've had them uh, partner with us. Just the, the different fans from the different cities starting with uh, Kirsten in Paris, mm -hmm. uh, Steve in London, mm -hmm. um, Korea, yes. uh, Seoul. Yes. Uh, who's our guy from Seoul? I forgot his name. It'll come to me in a second. Oh, God, I hate when I have this yeah. happen. Anyway, we've had Seoul, we've had Chile, we've had Paris, we've had London, mm -hmm. and now Berlin. Chile. Jason DeMont, that's it. Jason. Chile. Chile, that's what I said. Oh, sorry, I didn't hear you say it. I said Chile. Okay, sorry. I said Chile with a uh, vegan chili. Okay. Uh, no, Chile, Korea, uh, Paris, Paris, London. London. Now Berlin. And now Berlin. Look at this. We're just going around the globe. Um, and South Africa's coming, really? I didn't know that. And I think Sri Lanka wants to do it. Oh, we already did it in South Africa. You're right. We did South Africa. That's right. I can't even remember. But one of the great things that's happening on the internet today is that excellence um, in startups and the science of building a startup and you know the, the real chutzpah and wherewithal it takes to be an entrepreneur knows no geographic boundary and the techniques of building startups are spreading wildly thanks to things like incubators, Y Combinator, Techstars, thanks to things like uh, Twitter and blogs and social media you know, Hacker News, Dig, Reddit, even the show this week in startups these kind of things are making it easier for people to understand how to make uh, great companies, and I, I have to say, it's like every time we do this, Tyler, and I, tell me if you agree or not, the the quality of the companies from outside the U.S. is becoming indistinguishable That's right. from the quality of companies inside the United States, it's, and just three years ago, that was not the case. At all. At all. Right. I mean, some of the companies coming outside of the United States looked, uh, frankly, really bad. It right. was kind of like amateurish. We'd see them when we go yeah. on tour, and we'd be like, oh, I'm That's sorry. That's because the information's getting out there. Like, good blogs are getting out there. Right. Like, Suster's blog and every Mark Suster's, Fred I Wilson's. Mean, Fred Wilson's has been out for a while, but now people are finally becoming familiar. Yeah. All this resource is out there. Right. And it transcends borders. It transcends borders. And the only reason you haven't created an amazing startup. And Twitter really was a game changer in that. Sure. Yeah. And you, you could, because you could follow these other yeah. entrepreneurs and investors, artists, et cetera. And, you know, if you don't create an amazing company today, it really has nothing to do with, you know, access to information. Access to information. Right. There's no more barriers. So really, you just have to look in the mirror and say, you know what? I am lame. I suck. And all the tools. All the and, and all the tools are free. Tw if you don't Twilio, try. Twilio, MailChimp, all the Twilio, stuff. MailChimp. Hey, and even Liquid Web, the amazing Liquid Web. Ah, oh, Liquid Web, we have a new sponsor. High five, new well, sponsor. Yeah. Oh, God, we love having new sponsors. Uh, and you know, this is great. Liquid Web is an amazing, amazing hosting service. And what they're known for is a heroic uh, support team available 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. And they are one of the fastest growing companies in the United States in 2011. Why? Customer service. You know how like Tony Shea, who's on the program, is just obsessed with customer service? Mm -hmm. That's Liquid Web. Absolutely, absolutely uh, obsessed with making your Managed hosting, perfect and flawless, and they're giving $100 in free hosting to everybody if you go to bit.ly slash TWIST100. The only problem is I think that bit.ly 
is case sensitive. So it's like capital T, capital W, lowercase i, capital S, capital T, 100. We've got to fix that. Um, but anyway, uh, go to, um, you know what, let's just make a redirect from thisweekend.com slash liquidweb. Uh, thisweekend.com slash liquidweb. We'll make a redirect for that. But uh, these guys are experts in managed hosting. I know many, many, many folks have used them. Um, WordPress sites, online stores. They've got a plan to meet everybody's needs. And just, you know, customer service is what it's all about. Mm -hmm. Never, it's never, actually never, the, it's never. It's actually one of the startup's um, benefits. Is what? That things are shifting to a more co uh, customer service. You know who can oh, provide the Oh, of course, better. right. And startups customer service is a feature. Have a leg up in that. Yes. The dynamic against bigger companies. Of course they do. Yes, because they care more and they have they don't have apathetic employees. Absolutely. Uh, hey, you never have to worry about natural resources because they are in natural disaster neutral states. Natural disaster neutral states like Michigan and Arizona. See, that's fascinating. I never thought about that. Yeah, no earthquakes, no flooding. Hmm. I mean, what's the worst that can happen in Arizona? I mean, you could be. Uh, prick yourself on a cacti? I mean, there's no na there's no disasters in Arizona. Uh, no comment. I'm, there's an insight there I'm not going to There's touch. an insight? Yeah, I'm not touching it. Don't, them. please don't. Yeah, please no. don't. I mean, the, the, the hate mail I'm getting from your yes, I'm sure. racist remarks on I'm the last sure. <laughs> episode. They weren't racist, but anyway. Hey, thank you to at Liquid Web for doing it. And just everybody go thank at Liquid Web on their Twitter account or retweet me. I just tweeted it, um, you know, slash at Jason, whatever. Hey, so... Um, Radek, are you there? Radek, are you there? Oh, let's just go to Berlin, right? We have a little intro video. Let's go to Berlin. What is that music? What is that music? I feel like... Does that mean Germans like disco? What does I guess that mean? it means like yeah, Berlin is synonymous with disco. Hey, Radek, are you there? Yes, we are here. Hello, Jason and Tyler. How hey. are you doing? How many people do you have there? We're doing really well. Uh, well, we've got two locations. We've got uh, one of the oldest cinemas here in uh, Berlin. Hey, guys. Hey, everybody. Wow, look at all those people. There's yeah. like 100 people in there. We have over 200 people here and at the uh, Ahoy co-working space. You, which see what's, is kind you of know what's party. happening now is these cities are starting to compete with each other. Yeah. It is. It's becoming a little competition. Yeah, 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 yeah. Over 200 yeah. people. Yeah. Right now, like yeah. that's like a little twist for yeah. London and Paris. I know, I know. Like, oh, 150 yeah. was the yeah. record? Now the record is 200. It's crazy. Yeah. Hey, so uh, who, who are you? Who are you? Who are you? Who are you? Uh, my name is Radek. Um, I'm uh, working with some uh, partners here. We're doing a, a Berlin startup as well. I, I know about his startup, actually. We hung out at the Louvre and, in Paris, actually. Yeah, that's right. We, Tyler and I, we, we met at the Louvre in Paris um, after your uh, London and uh, Paris meetup yep. tour. Ah, very good. And he's got uh, a thing where they, you convert wax, you convert something into wax, right? Yeah, we, our, our company, we convert uh, plastics to waxes. So we're building a, a synthetic chemical company here in Berlin. Oh, wow. So yeah. that's completely interesting. Yeah, it's it it kind of wild. Yeah, this yeah. is a startup for you. Sure. I'm going to convert plastics into I'm wax. I'm sure Google's not going into that one. Yeah. So uh, what's your business plan when Facebook <laughs> enters the market? Right, right. <laughs> As I say, VCs are so yeah, stupid. Yeah. They're like, every question, well, what happens when, they used to always ask, well, what happens when Microsoft gets into your yeah. market? And now, like, nobody asks that question. It's like... Would, um, oh, by the way, that song they were playing before was one of the first German hip hop songs. I, didn't have, I have no idea. Uh, um, but uh, that's what the VCs used to always ask that question. You know, I don't know that. What they, were you doing when Microsoft gets into your market? They don't ask it as much now that Google's gone into VC. Because now that now they yeah right. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? Google goes right. into your market, right. and it's so funny. If you read when Google launched a venture capital firm, there were all these stories. Oh my God, Google is going to just decimate and destroy the right. venture capital industry because they have so much cash. Right. They could put ten billion dollars a year to work and, and just outbid every yeah. VC. No, they didn't do that. Right. It's got like a hundred million dollar fund or two or three hundred million dollar fund. They're pretty funding. careful, actually. God, they're super conservative. Yeah, I think. Yeah, I think. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I've sent them a bunch. And they're very analytical about what they like. Oh yeah, I think that. I don't it's know. It's mathematical, like a formula. I don't know that Google is going to be a successful venture capitalist because they've I been doing great investments. Have they? So, yeah. I know they did like some big ones, like in Solar City, like five hundred yeah. million. But I don't know about these little ones because I don't think that it's analytics that makes you a great venture it, capitalist. I think it's soul and being able to read. I people. agree, but the results have been pretty good. All right, we'll see what happens. Yeah. I, I, I just don't know if Google. 
you know, because of the quant-based mm -hmm. approach. Yeah. I don't know that the venture firm has a quant-based approach, mm -hmm. but I don't think that that approach works in backing entrepreneurs. Yeah, you could say the same about the music investment. It's weird, like which bands they get yeah. you know, record deals and all that. Right, I don't know if there's a money ball to be had right. in startups. Right. You know, in that sort of yeah. approach. Anyway, uh, so Roddick, you had uh, how many people presented tonight? We had 19 companies present today. 19? Uh, in a event before the short. 19, yeah. Berlin, wow. Berlin's exploding. Berlin is exploding. Yeah. How many startups you got in Berlin there? Oh, God. I don't know. How, how many do we have here? 19? Uh, 500. 500. <laughs> we have 19. And <laughs> we had yeah, 19 yeah. out of 19. All, all 19 so 500. Wow, that's pretty but, impressive. What's the venture yeah, capital yeah. like there? Are there venture capitalists yeah. there? Or do just like are. rich dudes uh, and, and you know just rich families? Yeah, we, we have some uh, VCs. We, have, we actually had a VC uh, on, on the jury uh, evaluate uh, the companies. And even uh, a, a couple of VCs dropped by yesterday during the pitch clinic unexpectedly. So they heard about uh, Twist and they loved it. And Great. Uh, they were here. Awesome. So, yeah, here. Little known fact. There's little known fact? Acton. Acton, yes. Is kind of based in Berlin. Um, yeah, I think they Berlin and, and Munich. In, right. Yeah. That, so there's actually... Yeah. Berlin. Hubert Bird is yes. a, in Mahal. Yeah, and they're investors in Mahal, yeah. Uh, okay, let's, uh, let's hear the first company. Who's the first company? Okay, so the first company, we've got Jan from Key Rocket. Awesome, let's hear it for Jan. Okay, so Key Rocket is the best way to master keyboard shortcuts. It's a Windows application that recommends you shortcuts while you work. And shortcuts are really useful, but there are too many of them. Ones that I don't need and ones I already know. So how do I learn new ones? Basically, KeyRocket learns from your daily routines and teaches you the one that you need the most. KeyRocket is really fun to use, so you, it actually works, and you save a lot of time. For that, large corporations love us and pay us 60 euro per user per year. Behind KeyRocket is a recommendation engine, which from the user's behavior, learns their needs, and then matches that with a deep knowledge base and feeds back the information that is most relevant to you. With that, we're going to disrupt how you and the 500 million office workers out there get trained with software. We just received seed funding. We're six people in Berlin. We're live with our open beta. So go to keyrocket.com, download, and uh, stop wasting your time. Awesome. Well done. Thank you. Uh, this is a great idea. It's a very clever idea. I am totally into the efficiency of shortcut keys. How many times have people been on the keyboard, and I take the mouse away from them and say, this, please stop using the mouse? Learn how to use keyboard shortcuts. You are his dream client. Right, because I know how, I, I watch people. Because oh. you walk up to people, and in the middle of a presentation, yeah. we'll say, why don't you use Command-Z? Why, why aren't you doing scroll this? Look, you can do two fingers. I, I don't know that you can get through a presentation without telling I somebody. Can't. If somebody doesn't understand how to you know, like do something like this, where they zoom in and out, you know, I mean, uh, or they don't know, like, Command C, Command V, Command highlighting X, a word, Command v. highlighting a line. Or just like you don't know Command yeah. L to go into like the URL, yeah. you know, or Command T to open a tab, or Command W to close those tabs, or Control Tab to scroll through your tabs, or Control Shift this, this Tab guy, yeah. to go through you, your you tabs the, the other way. Yeah. I mean, it's just like if you don't understand this stuff, number one, you're stupid. Like you're you're literally <laughs> wasting an hour a day. You do waste a lot of picking time. Picking up your mouse. The mouse yeah. equals death. If you touch your mouse and you're not a graphic designer, yeah. or you're, you know, whatever, you're not playing a game, mm -hmm. it, it's literally death. You, you're, you're, oh, it's so frustrating. Yes. This is brilliant. And yeah. for 60 euro, I think that's about $1,800 US yeah, at this point. Or, oh, two, no, wait. That, two I, grand a year. I think actually every other country in uh, Europe has collapsed except for Germany. So right. I think that's actually about six American dollars. No, 60 euro is like $90. Right. $90 a person. Now, that at first you say, wait, for a little utility, 90 bucks. But if that saves each person in your company just 10 minutes a day, which it will, I guarantee it saves 10 minutes a day, that becomes, let's say, an hour a week. An hour a week becomes 50 hours a year. That's like getting one more week of productivity out of everybody. One more week of productivity out of an entire team. All you need to if save is nine hours a that year. That might be $1,000 or $2,000 worth of salary. That's if it saves one hour a day. But let's even say it saves a fraction of that. If it saves just 1% of that, it still pays for itself 5, 10, 20 times over. And it gets people back to the important work. I'm doing a goddamn commercial for this. Yeah. What do you think, Tyler? What did you think of his pitch? Let's get to his the pitch. The pitch was actually quite good. Yeah. The, the pitch was good. The pitch was good. Um, I, I would be. Not a perfect pitch. No, I felt like you could have given some. I, I bet the data is in your favor 
around, there's some data points that I'm sure of would work. how many, like yes. I said, how many yes. minutes are wasted. Yes. You could actually give that. Yes. I think you could give some interesting data, like one out of five people don't know. Like, this presentation is not a 10. No. This presentation is not a 7. No. It's in between. You want a number. I I, see, I'm I just going to narrow where, you down. I see I'm going to narrow you down. We're between 7 and <laughs> we're, we're above 7 and below 10. The presentation was an 8. It's an 8. It's a solid 8. Yeah. I, uh, I'm going to say this presentation is a 7.5. I almost did too, yeah. Yeah, and I'll, the reason I say that is because, wow, what a wasted opportunity to not actually give the efficiency numbers. Yes. He did the classic mistake, which is yeah. he didn't personalize this or tell right. any kind of story. That's he right. just described the product. That's right. Thank God it's a compelling product. That's right. If it wasn't a compelling product, he would be down at a 5 That's or right. 6. That's right. It'd be a terrible pitch. Yep. But the great opportunity here is to tell a story. Right. Here is Susie. Yes. Here is Bobby. Yeah. Bobby doesn't know shortcuts. That's right. Here's Susie. Susie has gone through one week, has, has gone through, has had our software has installed been, for, been one using it for one week. Now, right. we had them both edit this document, both yeah. do the spreadsheet, both do the same task. Yep. One of them was able to do it in 19 minutes. Yep. One took 37 yeah. or 30. That's just one task. Yeah. So we thought maybe that's a fluke. So then we had Bobby go through the training. That's right. And Bobby's time to complete the task went down nine minutes. Yep. It was the software. We double tested it. Imagine if all your employees saved nine dollars in nine minutes a day, one hour a week, fifty hours a year. Boom, you would have a two percent more efficient workforce for only sixty dollars. If yeah. I said for sixty dollars you could have a two percent more efficient workforce, what would you say, Jason? Right. Boom. That's a ten presentation. Yes. But he almost got there. Now let's talk about the product. Let's talk about the product. Obviously, you love this. This was born, this made this for you. Of course, I, I, unfortunately, it's for Windows. I mean, I would, duh, where's the Mac version? But right. okay, I know he's going for the big market first. Uh, but what is the uh, what, what do you give the product? I wonder if you could couldn't you not build a web-based version that tracks your? Keys? He's going to build the he's going to build the yeah. Mac version. It's obvious. What does the product get? The product. What does the product get? I, I just feel like the market. Is I give the be product tough. a nine. What really? do you give it? I'm going to go. Because I think I'm you can here. extend this. I'm like. Because this is, it, they, they're building a learning thing. It's watching you work. Yeah. And they could, that could just keep oh, adding. Yeah, they should keep learning. I see. It's extensible. Sure, sure. I think. So, eight. You give it an eight. Okay, very good. Let's hear it for Jan, everybody, and for Key Rocket. Thanks you for the tips. I mean, thanks. Okay, thank you. And now, great right. tips. All right, so uh, congratulations. Let's have uh, Herman Frank from Fashionism come up next. Um, I'm Herman, founder of Fashionism. Um, do you like to get inspired before you go shopping for clothes, or do you feel frustrated after visiting 10 stores and having found nothing that accom accommodates your taste? Fashionism is a location-based fashion guide that lets you share and discover fashion around you and around the world. Follow your favorite brands, stores, and users. Um, just always stay up to date on brand, store, price, and proximity. You can even get navigation to the store. Try it on, buy it. It's that easy. Um, it's amazing. Uh, product search engine even learns your taste. So you will never miss out on anything you love ever again. Um, so whenever you want to get inspired or are searching for a pair of jeans from your favorite brand, fashionism, fashionism will get you there. OK. So. Um I guess the idea here, Tyler, is... Yeah, that's what you call not a good pitch. <laughs> not a great pitch. It was a, it was a lot of, uh, do you like being happy? You do? Good. Yes. You, you'll be ecstatic. Like, this is going to be wonderful, and you're going to love it, and you'll never have any problems ever again. Right. <laughs> but without really getting into what it's doing. Right. And I, I infer from what he said that um, it's showing you fashions that are in proximity to you. Okay. So how close is the store to you? So if we were walking around Berlin or yeah. Paris mm -hmm. and we took out our phone, it would be like Yelp and, or Zagat where you could search and say, show me sweaters near me or show me whatever around me, you know, mm -hmm. shoes around me, men's shoes or jeans around me, mm -hmm. and then we can get to that store quickly. I like that concept a lot. Sure. But that did not come out well in the pitch. Right. So the pitch was not good. What did you give the pitch on that? Yeah, that's, that was five-ish. Five-ish, yeah, I yeah. gave it a six on the pitch. I was confused. I don't know what exactly it does. He had a great vibe. Like he great did, vibe. He, he right. likes it, right? He yes. likes it. <laughs> so, and, and it's because it was an abstract pitch, it yes. becomes hard to understand an abstract pitch. Like, right. do you, does this person, you know, right. like, let's, let's focus it down. Yeah, he, um, you, you focused on the problem, which was you, the pain. You, were, you did a pain proposition, which is, um, 
shopping. Do, do you like? Do you, you the way he said it was? Do you do? You, does it feel bad when you go into ten stores and you don't buy what you like? That's a that's a rhetorical question. Of course, I feel bad. If yeah, I no. It's like do you, when you get hit with a hammer right. on the hand. Right. Do you, do you like it or do you, not? Do you, you not hit, like that? You not, not like good. that? Right. Okay. Right. Good. Okay. Then, what you could have focused on is, um, you know, the internet allows for finding all kinds of things instantly, right? Right. But yet you can't find your favorite pair of shoes. Right. Or something like that, right? Right. The, the internet is infinitely searchable. You can find any piece of or, data here's, or information. Here's, an, here's another way. But what it. about products? Here's the thing. One of the, um, the reason people love to shop in person is because they get to try clothes on and feel and touch them. Sure. However, it's hard to find the inventory around you. Yeah. And that's why people shop online. Right. Because they can see the complete inventory and very efficiently go through it. Right. What if you could have the efficiency of, of the Google, online of version, Google. the efficiency of, uh, online, a, of, of yep. online shopping, yep. like Zappos, yep. but the touch and feel and the warmth of going to stores in yep. the real world. Yeah, yeah. That's, That's what fashionism does. Yes. We are the search engine for clothes in the real world, Boom. and we're going to tell you what jeans are closest to you in your size. Yeah. And we're going to map them out, and you're going to be able to try on five pairs of jeans in a five mile square radius, and you're not going to be frustrated. So, you know, and you, the frustration of having to wait for your Zappos box goes away. And there's also discovery. What if you're in a new neighborhood and you just want to see what's in your neighborhood? Right. right. So I love and the then, idea. Then you get into the, that part of the pitch where you're saving retailers and retailers love this. and it's Ah, yes. Yeah. Then there's the value proposition yeah. of that. Like, yeah, hey, yeah. And so who's our customer? Hey, the right. retailers really want you to use this. And they are going to promote the app by putting it we're listed in fashionism. They can, and they could even give their best deals there because they know they're catching people who otherwise would be going on Amazon. Absolutely, or so. absolutely. Uh, so it's, I mean, it's a brilliant idea, I think, actually. It's a really brilliant idea. If that's idea. in fact the idea, we're, we're not entirely well, sure. Well, no, it is. Yeah, show okay. your personal style, follow your favorite brands, stores and fashion icons, and be rewarded with exclusive access to special offers. So there's the special offers. Um, Herman, um, this is a, a website or an app? It's an app. So what you're seeing, the address I, I sent you, it's a web version of our application. Got it. Uh, but the, yeah, the actual app is, uh, is quite a lot broader, or uh, there are a more, lot more features. And so I could search and say, and here's the search, I want shoes. Cool looking site. And uh, so that, or I guess, oh wow, I can just say, I want men's shoes. And, whoops, men's shoes, search. And it's going to show me just men's shoes around me is the idea. Um, and then when I click on something, I would see the details of these Hugo Boss shoes. Hey, what do you think of these shoes, Tyler? You like this, like with the black tips and the fades That's to brown? That's kind of cool, actually. They, I, you know, I almost bought these. And it's, uh, whoa, it was spotted by the shoes are Herm. I wonder who that is, the founder. And here it is. Here's, it's uh, only 9,000 kilometers away. Um, and here's the Foursquare <laughs> listing. But I mean, this is a really good idea. I could see myself, my wife, and yep. many people using this. It, yeah. It's kind of brilliant. Yeah. I give this idea a nine. Yeah. What do you it, give it, the idea? It, well, it is one of those very big ideas. It's, it's really it, a good it's idea. It's the type of idea that investors like, right? Because it's got, it's big enough, it's, it's very current with what's going on in yeah. the marketplace. Yeah, 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 yeah. And Where's the map, though? Why can't I see this right. on a map? Right, right, right. Where's the map view? Is there a map view Bo yet? But he, right there, bottom right. No, no, but that's for the permalink page, like oh. on the item page. I'm saying, I want to just see everything on a map. You building that feature? Um, mapping, like, yeah, map representation will edit, yeah. Hey, are you going to build that? That's not out yet, Herman. That's not out yet. Okay. Um, our approach is to like really represent things by proximity. Um, we believe that like just showing it on the map, visualize it is kind of outdated. But um, yeah, we will we will um, we will work on this. I don't think that's outdated because I tell you, anybody who opens up Yelp or Zagat will look at a map of the Chinese food restaurants around them and how close they are. I mean, that's just a standard operating procedure. They, also, you, know you what, don't though? have the distance. When you look at the actual items here in the grid view, it would be great if it showed you the distance. You know what else almost needs to be mentioned in this pitch? What's that? Is, and you can tell now by the way he designed that. There's a bit of, and I think this is touching on your point about outdated maps, is there's a bit of a Pinterest vibe to it. It does have a Pinterest a vibe. But it's a location-aware Pinterest. It's a location-aware Pinterest. Yeah, that's a nice way to that say would that. Be... Or a location-aware Zappos. Yes. It's Zappos meets Pinterest meets Foursquare. Yeah. 
if you were going to pitch it like a movie. Sure. You know, but it's a really good idea. I think there's a lot of work that left to be done on the UI. The UX needs work, but it's great. Uh, what do you give it in terms of as a, as, as a, on a business? Product? Yeah. Yeah, it's in the nine, you could even say nine five. This is, wow. this is the, exactly the kind of stuff uh, that, yeah. that needs to get built. Exactly. I, I love this. I mean, I, this is something I could see myself investing in. I, I think yep. that this has like awesome, awesome potential. Mm -hmm. All right, um, let's hear it for Herman. Thank you, Herman. <laughs> <laughs> For Herman! Herman. <laughs> uh, wow, so good so far. So, so good. Great, I mean, the quality company. is that, unbelievable. That, that is... Um, I mean, between these two, we, if, we, if we were trying to pick between these two, this would be the, this is a half hour long debate yeah, to pick between these two. Korea, but, Korea now has their work cut out for them exactly. with that last one. I'll tell you something. And if you have your work cut out for you when you're trying to build mobile apps, you need source bit. Pretty good? Nah, I've Not heard bad. better. But Seven? Okay. Yeah. Hey, listen, SourceBits is a leader in mobile app development. They do design-led engineering, and they could actually help fashionism here get this app out and, and maybe add a couple of features I'm looking for. They do design-led engineering. They're backed by Sequoia Capital. They have Hershey's, GE, Coca-Cola, and they make gorgeous, gorgeous product. I've met with the guys. Wow, and the gals over there, super smart team, yeah. and they're making beautiful product. And I, you know, I'm even thinking about using them for some of the overflow work we have here at Mahalo because right. we're just swamped and we're getting tons of clients. There's so much opportunity in mobile. I have to tell you, like everybody's like, oh my God, mobile's been going on for three years now. Three years is like three minutes in the existence of mobile. There is more innovation left to do in mobile. Like 99% of the innovation, you know, even after Angry Birds, Evernote, and all these other great mobile products, Foursquare, 99% of the opportunity is still there in mobile, and you have to capture it in the next 12 months. If your company doesn't get there, it, it, this next 12 months is critical in, in my mind in terms of mobile. If you have a company, you have to resolve the mobile issues. And you know what? Hiring a team is, trust me, I, that's what I do during the day. Hiring a team, you're going to find one team member every three months. It's incredibly competitive. They're going to get job offers from Twitter and Facebook and this one and that one and me. And you know what? It's a hyper competitive market. If you uh, need to, and you, know, and you don't have the time to do this, you gotta, you gotta outsource it. You gotta partner with somebody like Sourcebits, and these guys are fantastic. Go to www.sourcebits.com. Uh, give them a call. Tell them you heard about it on this week in startups, and I guarantee you'll have a great experience. I guarantee it. I guarantee it. Thank and, you at SourceBits, and, and hey, thanks to our friends at Liquid Web too. They make some on your Twitter. They account. make some damn good apps too. I used that. Uh, you used the my, nightstand. The nightstand app. I know. I know. And it's you gorgeous. Used, and that was you know good. What's amazing about it? What's amazing about it? You can triple tap and it dims it, so it's like. Oh in yeah, your you room. choose a triple, oh, kind of triple tap. Love it, love it. I've never even heard of a triple yeah, tap. Yeah, I know. You triple tap it. I think it's triple. It might be double. It's double like. or triple tap it, huh? Interesting feature. All right, hey, let's get back to the program. Uh, who's next? Okay, next uh, we've got uh, Sherman from Sunovu. Hey. Awesome. Okay, uh, let's hear about Sunovu. Okay. Okay, so um, as, I was, uh, as I was saying before, 99% of independent films don't get distribution, even festival acclaimed films. This is not only frustrating for filmmakers, but also for the audience because we're, we're just fed up uh, watching the same mainstream movies with the same stories played by the same actors over and over again. 99% of independent filmmakers are invisible. And Sinovo taps right into that market. Um, how? Um, like, I, I would like to refer to Sinovo. It's like SoundCloud. Imagine it's SoundCloud like in the, for independent film with much better content discovery and with actually a revenue model for the filmmaker. Filmmakers can actually make money on Sinovo. How does Sinovo make money? Um, the filmmakers pay uh, for storage and the audience pays per minute of film watch. We're about to go into closed beta soon. We've launched a social media campaign uh, two months ago um, uh, with overwhelming success. We're now looking for um, funding to be able to continue to seriously disrupt the market. Okay. Very good pitch. Um, and one of the, that was one of the more charming videos I've seen in a long time. Yeah, I love the videos. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I, I've heard people talk about this before. Obviously, you have Kickstarter in the market right. helping fund companies. And now it's like a verticalized. And then you have AngelList helping startups, right. right? So these are similar. Sure. You know, marketplaces for talent yep. to get funding. One yes. is for equity, one is not. Uh, and then you have things like Snag Films, mm -hmm. um, which is um, 
basically a home for independent films uh, that are not uh, you know in other places and you um, you know it's all advertising supported so you can go embed an actual full featured f uh, film but they go out and try to get in, in this case orbit's gum you know to um, become like the sponsors for this bring your a game um, so you know it was this pitch was high concept and low on details mm -hmm. and it's I guess trying to do the entire spectrum mm -hmm. of helping fund the right. artist helping let them distribute their films and helping the audience pay per minute. And monetizing, yeah. Yeah, and you know what? I, I think when you try to do everything, you uh, yep. subsequently are not going to get much done because it's just too many right. pieces to the puzzle. Right. So I do like the, the graphics. Um, the pitch had passion in it, but it lacked details, so it, you can't really judge the business. And so the pitch sort of falls flat. I give the pitch a six and the business a six because I don't know what's going on here really. Mm -hmm. Um, which, which, what is the exact specific thing you're doing right. better than everybody else? Are you going to be a better Kickstarter? Yes. Are you going to be a better Snag Films yes. or YouTube or Netflix? Yeah. What exactly is going on here? Well, that's the thing. Is some. What is your take from it? What, what is going on here? Well, she, she's. Are and, you asking me? No, I'm asking yeah. Tyler, because okay, and then we'll ask you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there is a huge problem there, and it's very tempting to belabor the problem for a long time. Right, this whole pitch was problem, 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 yeah, problem, and problem, and, problem, and, yes, yeah. and well, not really a solution. Yeah, we gotta get more into, and the problems, no one's gonna argue with you on that problem. The film business is driven by hits, those guys don't wanna take chances, Right. but I'd be, I'll be honest, I think the problem with film is that um, not enough it's not the the filmmakers are not bold enough. They wait for permission to make their movies. Right. Like they're, they're, filmmakers are in some ways like the opposite of startups. Like they will only make their film if somebody gives them money to make it. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. uh, in most cases, mm -hmm. and they need to be a little. I don't more agree. Oh, okay. I don't agree. You're very wrong. Okay. Uh, because that. otherwise, we wouldn't have 99% of films that are being produced without distribution. This is exactly the market we're tapping in. I think you don't know what you're talking about. There you go. Uh, Whoa. No, this we don't. So no, no, what I, if, I, the, if that German what woman... What I'm saying uh, is about... Um, <laughs> you, you tap the German don't woman. Don't they wait for uh, funding to make the film in most cases? I'm not talking about distribution. I know no, distribution's broken. No, I agree. I would like to clarify. I would like to clarify. Okay. I think maybe we're, uh, we, there is a misconception uh, about the term independent film. Sure. In the U.S., anything that is not produced by the big studios is independent. Right. When we refer to independent films, we really mean, we don't mean the art house films that are part of the system like, um, I don't know, um, uh, Michael Moore or Almodovar. They're not mainstream, but they're art house, but they're not independent because okay. they're well-funded. Well gotcha. We refer to independent films, filmmakers who self-produce, who hold all the rights, where the filmmaker is the producer, and they usually put up their own private money to do it, and right. that it is 99% of the market. They don't wait to get funding. How many? And, okay. and, for every? And they produce their films for passion, but they don't get distribution. And ah. OK, but, so that's, that's a big problem. Right. You, you, we agree there's a big problem. There's a big problem there. But they can't they just put their film up on YouTube? No. Uh, well, yeah, yes, they can, but on YouTube they can't make money, and YouTube ah. doesn't have content discovery. So you were asking, what is our USP? Our USP is content discovery and the fact that on our platform, filmmakers can start making money. Got this it. is our USP. Okay, and, what, and how so does it compare it, to Snag Films? Uh, Snag Films, first of all, it's not well made. It's specialized. It focuses. It doesn't grasp. It focuses mainly on documentaries. There is no direct revenue model for the filmmaker, um, it is, um, and um, it, it doesn't, like, if you go on Sinobu, Sinobu is an international platform. You can, you can search for country, you can search by language, you can search for a mood you're in, you can search by category. Snack Films tried, went one step ahead and tried some more content discovery than Vimeo or uh, YouTube before but they're not quite there yet. Hmm. And they, it's an American joint. They don't understand that the world doesn't only speak English and that many films are not English and uh, that there are many films out there outside the United States. So can I, can I do your pitch over for you? <laughs> yeah. You might have a great product here, but your pitch is 
not helping uh, mm. to, to explain okay. it. So, so how could okay. you make the pitch better? Here's how no, you... Okay. Yeah. Go it's on spent. our website. We have a landing page, yeah, Sunoco.com. No. There is a little video. It's a demo video. Yeah, uh, and you can have a sneak peek into how you can discover films. Maybe that will help you. Okay. Okay. So let's do like this. Okay. Here's how I okay. would pitch. I'll, for what it's worth, here's how I would do your pitch. Um, what's your favorite restaurant? My favorite restaurant? Yes. Currently, it's Milo Olive. Milo Olive. Oh, yeah. Um, I'm, I'm, you didn't mention Burger King. No, I didn't. No. Um, I, I assume you eat at uh, Subway every day. No. No? No. You like smaller? More intimate? Intimate restaurants? Yeah, I like by, the hot, yeah. By, uh, by somebody who, you know. Uh, a craftsman who cares. A craftsman who cares? Yeah, I do. You do. What about movies? But, I, I, but do, do, do you watch big blockbuster movies? Yeah, I do. But did you know, Jason, Yes. that for every big blockbuster movie, there's literally a thousand smaller, cooler, passionate movie makers that are releasing, but currently don't really have a place to release those movies? Really? I can't find them on Netflix? Right. Well, that's the problem. Ah. Yeah. How there, do I get those films? That's what we do. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm looking at the, the preview here, actually, in the audience side of the video. I didn't play this. I played the video on the left, which was the filmmaker one, actually shows okay. the website. And the website looks very nice. I like the design of it very much. And um, I get the idea that it's truly international. And these are some clever features here, like choose a mood, um, and light or heavy, slow or fast, uh, and pick a language, um, runtime, long enough, are you kidding me, for length. Um, it's, it's a very good looking website. And I think it's got a lot of characters. So I, I think it's designed with emotion and passion. And it looks like a very complete solution. I can't wait to play with the site. And I'm a, I'm a cinephile. Right. Um, so I, I we, think I get more now when I see this. This is um, a social network. And it's basically net, a better Netflix. For undiscovered. For undiscovered films. I mean, yes. I, I feel like it's a better Netflix. Yes. Um, and, and so that would be. The, the key is to say, though, that and you, we're Netflix for truly independent film. Right. But what for every movie that gets in Netflix, how many undiscovered films uh, yeah. are left on the roadside. What's, how many the, what's that number? Do you know Sherman? For every person who gets picked up by Netflix, how many don't? Or love film or whatever, you know? 20? At least, a, a t no, 1,000 or more. 1,000. So let's just say 1,000. Yeah. That's an easy, nice, big number. So for every movie that makes it into Netflix, there's 1,000 that don't. Right. Right? It's so easy to search now that we've made it really easy to search for all, through all those movies so you can find exactly the kind you're looking for. And by the way, you probably don't eat Subway every day, so I imagine you like have, have a discriminating yeah. taste for this kind of stuff. Yeah. So you have to apply it to like something they already relate to, yeah. like restaurants where everyone I'll agrees. I'll tell you something. I'll yes. tell you something. If I had to choose a passionate entrepreneur with a pitch that I, I couldn't understand, but then after a little bit of back and forth is actually sure. really compelling, I'll take it. Right. So I, I kind of give the... I like the idea of the business. I don't like the idea of paying per minute unless it's super cheap. Um, I just like the idea of just having a subscription and paying five bucks a month or ten bucks a month and watching all I want. Mm -hmm. um, well, it's a subscription model, uh, oh. but it translates in a pay per minute. Oh, okay. Like it's easier to explain it, but it, it's a subscription model where you pay five dollars and nine dollars a month, but you get a certain amount of minutes. How many minutes watch. do I get for five? Um, you get like um, twenty hours, and then um, oh wow, I don't know, break it down. So that's yeah. ten films. Yes, and, and the whole point is that 50 most cents a independent, film? Yeah. And most independent films are shorter formats, and short films in the analog world, they don't have distribution. Hmm. And nobody would pay even 50 cents to watch a, I don't know, short documentary from Zimbabwe, but because the, the risk is too high, even for 50 cents. But if it's part of their subscription model, they would pay it. And I right. think this is where we're really revolutionary, because you don't pay per film, That's a good you point. pay per yeah. minute. Okay. I like it even better. Um, and is, when is the website coming out? Uh, we're about to go into closed beta. We need, uh, we need an investor to be able to do that. We host the films ourselves. We have the DRM and we do the CDN. So we need money to have a stable system to be able to invite people to upload their films. So right. um, we're waiting for an angel investor to, to come on board. And, and getting the films, online. is there a problem with getting these films? Or are these films so... You know, it's, it's not competitive to, no. to get these people to sign up, is it? No, uh, 
as I said in my pitch, we've had overwhelming success. We started a social media marketing campaign. You see the landing page. Until two days ago, it was just the first video. Based on a video and a logo and a tagline, within the first three months of three weeks, we had 1,000 Twitter followers, almost exclusively independent filmmakers Why? signed yeah. up. Why don't, 1, you, um, why don't you just put it on Kickstarter for $250,000? You'll build the site if people do it because you have the videos made already. I think you'll instantly raise 250 on Kickstarter, and then you give people either a three month, six month, or year or lifetime membership, right. depending on how much they donate. And if I donate 500 bucks, I get a lifetime membership yep. or something. And it'll yeah, be we're planning. Yeah, we're you'll raise the money that. easy on Kickstarter. Yeah. Easy. Okay. Awesome. Okay. Well, let's let's hear it for Sherman and Sinovu. Thank you. This was a really good example of why pitches I, see, are important. Yeah, pitches are important. Okay. I give the pitch, I give these videos a 10. I give the, the, yeah, the, pitch, are I give the pitch a 6. Yes. Um, and I give the product, the business, I, I give it an 8 right now. Yes. I think it's got potential. It does. I like it a lot. What do you yep. give the pitch and the, and the business? Uh, the first version that we heard? Yeah, the first yeah, version. Yeah, it was not a pitch. It was, yeah, it's in the 6 range. Okay. And the business? The business is... You're right, it's one of those eights. Yeah, it really depends on execution. Okay, let's hear the next company. Okay, so the next company we have is uh, Squad Mail. Okay. Squad, Squad Mail. Yeah. Okay, let's hear it for Squad Mail. The purpose of Squad Mail is to vastly increase our users' email efficiency. We do that with Dropbox style shared email folders that are seamlessly synchronized and just work. I exchange at least 10 emails a day with my co-founders. So why do we have to constantly open new conversations for it and separately dispatch and file them? It just sucks and is an amazing waste of time. Why can't we have one central shared space for exchanging emails like Dropbox gives us for exchanging files? Squadmail solves that problem by letting users create and share email folders with just an email address. That's all they need to get started. So never again will you have to forward an email in your office with a job application. You can simply drag and drop it right in the folder and discuss it exactly there as well. Don't worry about CC list. Can you still hear me? Don't worry about CC list. Yep. Don't worry about lost email. And don't worry about having everyone in your team on the same page again. Squadmail works without downloads, without software, and there's no space limit. Just file share, just email sharing. Thank you. Wow. OK. Um, wow, I like this pitch. Um, well, I should say I like this business, uh -huh. but I don't know if I like the pitch exactly because he was going so fast yes. and he was talking about Dropbox. Yep. And I, I didn't exactly get well, what's go exactly going on here, but when I watched the video at the same time, the video did tell the story. And essentially, you have folders filled with email. So if you have 100 people email their resume to you, or if you have a customer support line or, or partner emails, you could dump them all into a communal folder, Squad Mail. I like the name, actually, Squad Mail. And uh, you can give everybody an email address for that folder. They can just forward the stuff there, I guess. And that, that seems to me to be a pretty interesting value proposition. I, I, I want to know why did he build this, because I have a feeling he built this because of his own frustration. Sure. Um, but anyway, um, not, yeah. it's, it's, a, it's a bit more embarrassing than that. You know, um, like. Apart from copycatting American um, companies, another trend in Germany is to build like uh, efficiency startups. Mm -hmm. And actually, we did that as well. And we wanted to build something like Squadmail on our platform. And then uh, one of my co-founders said, what, wouldn't it be really awesome to have this for email? Um, huh. Well, actually, it took like 15 minutes for me to stop saying no one wants that. Right. And then we built it, and we, we saw people love it. Like, we're very recently, we launched in private beta. Hmm. That's it. I love it, yeah. Um, and uh, so I, I, I had a little bit of a problem with the pitch, but go ahead, Tyler. You tell me what you think. I I'll have to be honest. I still don't understand exactly what it does. Let me see if I got this correct, uh, Philip. Am I correct in saying yeah. that this is a well, this is an intranet? Why don't you log into into the Gmail account we gave you? Because you should be able to express it. Oh, your pitch. I'll, I'll log into it. I'll oh, log into okay. it. Yeah. The point is, I can, I can. the point is, when okay. you're when you're at a cocktail party or you're in a cab or on a bus and you meet somebody who's a perfect you partner can't for you, that, yes. they're not logging in. So get your pitch right. Don't be lazy yeah. about it. Oh, yeah. sure. Learn, oh, learn sure. how to pitch. Oh, 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 oh. Okay, I mean, hold on. I mean, I assume that's how the Germans like it because I'm, I'm just taking a riff off. Of, uh, <laughs> the last, yeah. It's getting contentious in here. Okay, um, 
you explain okay, it so one more time is, to Tyler. You, you create folders on your IMAP email server, and then you tell us with whom you'd like to share them. And then those folders are recreated on their email server, and we constantly synchronize and make sure that all the emails, notes, files, attachments in them are always the same across all of your email servers. Got it. So you basically have figured out a way with IMAP to give everybody the same folders and synchronize them across. So here, exactly. here I am inside of Gmail, and you have squad mail, and there's applications for the launch conference, internship applications, launch conference, and these, and then all these other, I guess squad mail would be the top level one. I love this. Why isn't this a feature of Google domains inherently? Because what Google does is they want to get everyone on their platform, right? Yeah. But stuff like Squadmail only works as everyone is using it. If, if one out of ten people isn't using it in your team, then it doesn't have any advantage for you anymore. Uh -huh. So Google can't really build products that everyone can work with. But even people who use Outlook and whatnot uh, that use Yahoo Mail. Right. So this so would Google, be one of the people on here could be using Exchange or Outlook. Anything, 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 no matter what email client or email provider you have. It's uh, entirely so, built on open standards. So now if I reply to one of these emails or I delete it, does it delete it and reply to it in everybody's? When you reply, you can see we already replied to emails in the folder internship application, for example. Yeah. We discussed this intern. Like we ah, replied yeah. from our she Apple sucks. mail. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and if you delete an email, the, the thing is, if you delete it, if one of the folder collaborators deletes it, it doesn't mean that the data is deleted for everyone. It just means that we take it out of the social loop. So it will then be copied into the folder's archive, Got which it. just exists locally for you and is no longer synchronized. Got it. Um, I, I really like the idea. It's a little bit complicated for people to understand. That's I right. think I think it's hard to demo. Um, I give it shouldn't the, be hard to demo, though. That's the that's the key. Yeah, there should, should, there should be a way to make it better. I give the I give the presentation a seven, and I give the business a seven point five. It's a feature, but it could yes. result in more. What do you give it, Tyler? Uh, Pitch and, good, and the business. Good point on the feature part. Um, yeah. But then again, Dropbox is a feature. Dropbox is a feature that's become more than just a feature right. because the, they've added so many features. The to problem it. was by oh, yeah, yeah. so a feature can't become a business oh, if you sure. keep adding to oh, it. Oh, absolutely. Right? I think absolutely. Dropbox was a feature that's now a business. Oh, they're oh, both. Jason, yeah. Can I yeah. Can I interrupt you, Jason, for a of second? Of course, of course. Go ahead. Just, we, we, we're live like uh, less than a month now. So think about this. The next big thing, product feature, that we're probably going to implement is a public folder. And just think about the implications that has. Finally, for the first time ever, you're able to access a um, content co-hosted on an email server via a URL. You can make a, um, an email public. You can like um, distribute a newsletter over your email server. That, that, that becomes like an 8.5. 8. 8. Yeah. yeah, I love that feature. That's a great feature. And if you keep adding features like that and listening to the users, this becomes a 10 business, just like Dropbox well, It could did. be a, just a game changer in communication. Yeah, I think it's really slick. I, I give it a 7.5 and a 7, and I could see it becoming an 8 or a 9 in the coming months. What do you give the pitch? What do you give the business? He's got to get in and I'm sorry to qualify. Okay, so you want numbers. Um, I, I, I demand numbers. I, <laughs> you, what, the, the pitch, pitch is... The pitch was a six. Okay. Because uh, I'm still not entirely clear what it does. Right. And uh, the... It's a synchronized list of that across all email systems. So if you have Gmail, yes. I have Yahoo Mail, yes. somebody else has Exchange, yes. we can make a group I got that. email list and just it's a group it's, folder list. They're boxes. Yeah, but they're folders that transcend know, every email mean, system, need, and they synchronize it on their side. It's pretty means, brilliant. Right. You don't understand that? I understand it, but he, he, he need, didn't pitch it, it well to, It needs to be put into a metaphor that's easily understandable. You can't just piggyback it's, on top it's of Dropbox. It's Lotus Notes folders and that kind of groupware yes. functionality into Gmail that doesn't yet exist. Yes. Because uh, people well, live in that, their email box. A, I, I can give him a good metaphor, I think. Right? Um, the metaphor would be, we're like the office pin board. You take a memo, you pin it to it, yes. and everyone can go there and check it out. Yeah. Yes. Instead of making copies of the pin board and, well, forwarding it to, uh, on everyone's desk. Yes. Love it. I love it. Okay, anyway, what do you give the business time? Um, what's, uh, how, how are you charging? Yeah, how much does it cost? How do you, how do you charge? How do you pay? Um, well, we just recently launched, and the enterprise version will be introduced within the next two months, likely. And it's going to cost substantially less than Dropbox because we don't host any content. Right. Mm -hmm. And because of that, we have a way better cost structure than them. Where is the stuff hosted? Is it yeah. hosted in my Gmail, in my, my Gmail. local IMAP? Yeah, on, 
on your email server. Perfect. That's I love point. it. You know, yeah. you know makes the exactly business even better. Yes. A dollar per user per month. That's your price. Yeah. Give it an eight. I give it an eight. <laughs> I give it an eight. I give it an eight. Tyler, what do you I will, give it? I'll give, I will give it an eight. I give it an eight. All right, there you go. You got your eight. Let's hear it for uh, Philip. I love the idea. Yeah. I'm going to probably try it out. I like it. I like it. I've been looking for something like that. All right. Yeah, I will yeah. send you a link. Thank you. Thank you. It's brilliant. The cool thing is that there's a brilliance there. There is. A, it's a brilliance. And I love the fire in the Berlin. Yeah, I do too. Holy cow. Very different I, from Korea. <laughs> or, or London or Paris. I mean, yes. this, is a, this is a fiery group. Yes. They're going to get their point across. Yeah. I have to, and I, you know what I love about these ideas so far? All original. I, right. I was no just about Sam, to say. Sam, Samwar Brothers that's, in here. That's right. Is it Samwar? How do you pronounce Samwar? Samwar. Is it Samwar? The the lying, cheating, Samwar, I think, right? Somewhere. Samwar? Somewhere. Hey, let me ask you a Somewhere. question. Death do, Star. Do Germans hate those guys for being copycat thieves? I oh that's yeah, good to hear. That's pretty good to much. Hear. Yeah. Let me tell you guys something. Germany is getting a bad name because of the Samwar brothers. People in America now believe, and, and around the world in fact, that the Germans are not original thinkers, and that's not true. You guys, anytime you meet somebody from the Samwar brothers, you should boo and hiss them. And any of your friends who go to work for them, you should tell yeah, them yeah. not to go work for them. And if you go work for them, you're selling your soul to the devil because stealing that blatantly and ripping off other entrepreneurs is abhorrent. It's terrible, especially in a world where there's so much opportunity to just become total, complete photocopying thieves is the lowest form of garbage you can imagine. I am disgusted by it. And as Germans, you guys should boo and hiss any of your friends who go work for them. And you really, you should, you should admonish them because they're giving all of Germany a bad name. And this is the country that builds some of the finest products in the world yep. that are very original. And, and people copy you guys on so many other products. Mm -hmm. And now the whole internet industry there has been absolutely uh, scarlet lettered. It's been, it's been flagged as copycat. It's not true. That's well, it. I'm, uh, so that's my rant. Yeah. I, I think everyone agrees with you here. Everyone agrees with you. Has anybody in the audience ever, be honest, has anybody in the audience ever worked for the Samwar Brothers? Anybody ever worked there? Come on, hands. admit it if you have, because I want to ask you a couple questions. Yeah, anybody? We'll give you the mic. No, no takers. Okay. Has anybody in the audience ever been copied by them? Photocopied by them? Has anyone been ripped off here? Okay. No, it's a pretty. Yeah. Okay. They just they just steal from American companies apparently. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Here, let's go. Let's get the next person come up. Florian. Okay, so our, Florian. our last and, and certainly not least uh -huh. is uh, Minus Spiel zu Kirste, or My Toy Box in English. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, let's hear it. I'm typing in your URL right now, which is extremely long, and I've misspelled. Go ahead. Hi, hi Jason. Hi, Tyler. Hello. Jason. Jason and all parents on this show will We'll agree on that. You spend a lot of time and money on buying toys, but you clutter your homes with them because your kids lose interest so fast. <laughs> what a huge waste. This is exactly the reason why we founded Meine Spielzeugkiste, in English, My Toy Box. My name is Florian, and welcome to uh, our page. What we do is we rent recommended educational toys on a subscription basis to families with kids under the age of four. Our website. I love it already. Keep going, keep going. I love it. At our website, you tell us what your, let's say, your little daughter, uh, London. Yes. What, what, what she should learn in the next couple of months. And then you receive a box of four recommended educational toys from us, delivered directly to your door every other month. Oh, how much? That way, that way. Your kid always plays with games and toys that support their development best. And at the same time, you save a lot of money and a lot of hassle. Oh, God, I love it. It's absolutely brilliant. Um, I give the pitch um, an 8.5 on the pitch. I give the business a 9.5. Yep. Uh, it's a great idea because I'll tell you why this is a great idea. Um, having gone through this, 
it's so much research to find the great toys. So I would actually pay for a subscription that just told me which ones to get, let alone a box showing up and me not having to do any work. You've saved me the research and you've saved me the shopping. How much does it cost? Exactly. How much? This is a, How much? Sorry. How it's much? 19 euro, it's 19 euro a month for four toys worth 160. 19 euro? Bling, wow. Bling, bling. I'm in. Is there like a bigger package? Is there like a whale package for somebody who wants to spend 50 bucks a month or 100? <laughs> I want to spend 100 to every two months. That. Is there a $100 package or no? Uh, we'll, we'll talk about that. That's a, a brilliant idea. But always, let me say that. We love. Always. This is a tip for entrepreneurs. Always have, just like at a restaurant, they have like some crazy dish for rich people who want to just show they're rich. Thousand dollar Sunday. Yeah, they have yeah, like a thousand dollar Sunday. But no, you always have like the fifty dollar extra supplement for people who want to really luxury it out. Or Netflix had a hidden program where you could have nine DVDs out at once, and I had it because I was a cinephile. I was like, well, twenty five dollars versus forty five dollars a month. It's only twenty dollars more. I'm going to have nine CDs instead of three. I like that. It's worth the twenty bucks for me, mm -hmm. even though it's two hundred fifty bucks a year more. For me, as a movie file, that's what I want to spend my money on. Instead yeah. of an extra martini or two every month, yeah. I'll just get the extra DVDs. I don't drink. I'll spend it on that. You should always have a higher end you know, offering for people who really, because with parents, they will spend any amount of money on education for their child. Any amount. They will spend it if they don't have it. That People love their kids. And when it comes to educational products for kids, it's insane. Parents will spend any amount of money on it, as they should, the education of your child. There's nothing more important for it. Tyler, what do you give the pitch? What do you give the business? Yeah, the pitch was uh, almost perhaps. a nine. It's perhaps the best pitch. Yeah, like eight, five, nine. Why? Um, Why was well, it such a good pitch? It perfectly explains what it does, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, granted, it's an easier It's an easier thing, thing to do. To explain. Right. He explained the pain point. Yeah. He made it personal to me, yes. which, you know, um, and... Yeah, yeah, you did loop him in with it. You, you, I mean... You pulled me in, but yeah, it's If easy. you mention somebody's kid, like, they're in. Like, Whoop, yeah, yeah. That's, I mean, it, yeah. Uh, and the business? Business, um, these are currently, as, as obviously he probably knows, the, the probably safest success rate businesses out there, which are subscription business... Subscription commerce. Yes. Shoe Dazzle. Yes, the Shoe Dazzle model, right? Yes. Matter of fact, Brian is interested in this model, mm -hmm. and there's Brian. A, there, Brian from Shudazzle. Oh, from Shudazzle, yeah. And there is an LA company who will be launching the. It's the yes, identical okay. yes. company. One of our friends. Uh, there's actually another one other than ah, the one of our friends. Right. And his is toys. The one you're talking about is not toys. It's clothes. It's clothes. Kids' the clothes. Other, there's another one that's toys. Ah. And it's like, so. But I like this because it's educational. Yeah, that's what this one is. It's like oh, okay. educational. So the idea is out there. What do you give the idea? I can tell you theirs is 40 a month. Okay. Um, but this is a layup of a business, a slam yes, dunk. It is a slam dunk of a business. How much? How much? Yeah, you, this score? is a nine business. Nine yeah. business. All right, yeah. let's hear it. Let's hear it for my toy box. Thank you very much. Mein yes. Spiegel Kist. Mein I actually like the name. Spiegel <laughs> Kist. I like his shirt. I want one Mine of those shirts. Spiegel Joit Kisten. Mine. Spiegel Joit Kisten. I'm terrible at German. Yeah. Terrible. Wow. Jason. Okay. Yes. Jason. Yes. Th thanks for being on the show. I will send you a special um, Meine Spielzeugkiste directed to your home for your daughter. Oh, thank um, you. Filled with four recommended toys. Absolutely. And I will hope you like it. And, then, and maybe you then can spell the name. Yes. yes. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. I mean, but just so you know, having a domain name with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, <laughs> 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. A 19 letter domain name, even in German, is unacceptable. I like it. Get it below 10 characters. <laughs> Get 12 characters or less, please. Not 19 character domains. And you got, you're going That's for the .de. Just do Toy Box. Go buy it. Spend the money. This is a great idea. Great idea. All right, Thank we have you. to pick a winner. We're so far behind here. This won't be easy. This is not going to be easy. I, okay. Now, let's go through one more time. We did have Key, uh, Rocket. Key Rocket, which was uh, shortcuts, educational. It was shortcuts that uh, learned what shortcuts you didn't know. It's suggest 80 bu passive 60 bucks. suggestions of yes. shortcuts. Yes, yeah. fashionism, which is Foursquare plus Zappos plus Pinterest, awesome. Yeah. Sinovu, the very, very fiery uh, yes. Sherman, who schooled us. No, and, no lack of passion. Oh my God, she's passionate about yeah. it, and I, I'm passionate about independent <laughs> film. And she's, yeah. and she even says like these are truly independent film. And I agree with her because I, when I talk about independent film and in the United States, 
People will not get off their asses and make true independent films. They'll, they'll only go out and beg for a million dollars or two million dollars, then start their project. You gotta be willing to go make a film for $50 or $5,000. Where's the $10,000 film? We're talking about LA, because I mean, we know- I'm talking the, about all of, all of the United States. People, well, it's certainly true artists in LA. are not true artists, because they, yeah. they're not like going out and saying, I have to make a film today, and I have to record something on video and edit it. What part of that conversation that was missing was you and I sit in cafes and restaurants all around Hollywood. Of course. All, all year long. Bob, 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 I want to make a movie. I want to make a movie. Somebody yes. give me permission. Right. Nope. And, and yeah. at least in Hollywood, the people wait till they get paid. So. Exactly, exactly. Okay, so then there's a Novo. And then Squad Mail, which is pretty, pretty interesting. And then there's my toy box. Yes. Mean Spiegel, close to. Now, what right. do you want to judge these on? Wow. Well, I mean, we're just going to judge them on which one we would. Which, Most likely. Which one's going to have the largest revenue a year from now? No, we just which one you liked best. That's very nebulous, like I know, but it's, people want to know Tyler's preferences and my preferences. Well, should we do what? which one I'm most likely to invest in? Angel in, As an angel okay. investor hat? Okay. Or which one would win launch conference or would win? Which one is the best overall in terms of their yeah, progress? that's what I want to do is define best. So let's define best as which one is the most um, innovative, Okay. A combination of innovative, uh -huh. most progress on a product development. Okay. So we have innovation, how innovative, yep. uh, progress on the product, yes. uh, business model, mm -hmm. those three. Okay. So which one is the most innovative, has done the most progress, and has the best business model all in one? Okay. Which is another way to say I would invest in it. So you're looking at something like yes. Key Rock and you go, hey, that's pretty innovative. Yes. It's, that's got it's done on the progress. In progress, yeah. it's yeah. all Pretty done, cool. and it's got a great business model. Fashionism, you do something like fashionism, you're like, hey, that's that's definitely innovative. They've got okay progress. They still have a lot to go. Yeah. And the business model, eh, I'm not sure. Right. Sonovu, business model, mm, not sure. Progress, right. mm, medium. They're not done. Innovation, somewhat innovative. Mm -hmm. Squad mail, I got eh, you. somewhat innovative. I got you. you get the idea. Yep. Toy, my toy box, not. It's not, actually that kind of subscription stuff is not super innovative necessarily. Right. But boy, does they they make great progress and do they have a great business model? Yeah. Huh. It is hard. I, 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 this is hard. All right, let's do this. Let's pick our top three yes. and then have a second round two. Okay. So we're gonna knock out two. Okay. All right. So I'm gonna pick my top three, but I'm not putting them in order. Yeah. No, I already know your top three. The same as my top three. Yeah. Okay. So. Here we go. This is yeah. the top three, but this is not and in any order. I know why you're doing this because these top three are really hard to pick. Right. Choose a winner so out here, of. now we're going to pull it over at the same time. Yep. You got yours written down? Uh, hang on. Okay. Write yours down. Don't look at mine. I'm not looking. Tyler, don't I, look. I don't need to look. I know you don't. All right. So the three that we think did are in the top, the finalists are. Mm -hmm. We're going to pick the finalists. Yeah, hang on. Come on, come on, come on. I just got to write the last one. Okay. Uh, uh. Just write them down. It's hard to spell. Hint, hint. Uh, uh, yeah, we know that. Uh -huh. we'll just do the English version. Okay. <laughs> All right. All right. So yeah. I said, what's here? Yeah. Key we, Rocket, My Toy Box, oh, we have and Fashion. A, we had a different one on the Fashion. Oh, you put Squad Mail and I put Fashion. Okay. Yes. So fine. It wasn't yeah. clear. Yeah, yeah. All right. So then that means. That means those two are now the top two. No, that doesn't mean those are the top two. Now we have to put these three in order. That means I take out Squad Mail and you take out Fashion. Okay. That's, actually, that makes sense. Right. Okay, right. So right. we got two. We got so key then, and toy box. So key and my toy box. Key rocket and my toy box are the best. Yes. We're gonna put them in order. Okay. And uh, this is gonna be very difficult for you to do because you know I'm passionate about both of these. Yes. Which one am I most passionate about? I, I know. Oh, that's great. Because you are OCD about key rocket, but you have a kid who's a for toy box. So you're personally. I'm gonna base it on which one. No, I can't base it on which one I would invest in. I'm equally likely to invest, I think. <sighs> Reve God. Revenue a year from now. Revenue a year from now? Yeah. Top line or bottom line? Great. But, well, yeah, well, because... Uh, I can tell you that my toy key, box will key have... Rocket the, has no cost. So, yeah. key, key Rocket will have the best margin, yes. the best bottom line, yes. but my toy box will have the best top line. That's right. Top. Key Rocket is an, a 60, 70 percent margin business. My Toy Box is a 10 percent margin yeah. business. T 20, maybe 20 percent. I actually know the exact margin, and I know how much he's going to pay to acquire per user because I know the it's guy. It's going to be I know the business 60 well. bucks to acquire a user. Yeah. One and a half months. It, it, yeah. One and a half month. It's 67, I think. Yeah. Yeah. So two months, whatever. It's it's probably and it probably has a margin of 25 percent, 20 percent, 30 percent. Uh, no, it's closer to like 35. Yeah. Okay, so let's just say it's 30 yep. percent. So then it takes you four or five months 
to break even that's on exactly, a customer acquisition. That's exactly you got right. a six month break even, and after that's all gravy. Yep. Which means, okay, you got you to keep users for some average amount of time. Okay. Um, God, this is such a coin to us. Yep. I'm going to say. I'm going to throw gold. I, I'm gonna, okay, I'm going to give you my number one and my number two. I have it written down here. I do too. Okay. That's my number one, Key Rocket. And my number two is Toy Box. I went the other way. You went the other way. I, but I wasn't going, guessing I'll what tell you, you wanted. Why. I because was guessing I, for what my I wanted. daughter, my wife is yeah. doing the, the. I like how that worked out because they're both great. They're both great. So it's a yeah. tie. It's a yeah. tie. It's a tie, everybody. Let's hear it for Key Rocket right. and my Toy Box. Big round. All right, well done, guys. All right. Yeah, well done, guys. Here you get go. The winners up here. Let's get those winners up here. And here is the. Um, Either one of you can can they make it out to the show? Get a table. Right, here's the thing. I'm gonna. I'm. I'm so excited about the launch conference. I'm gonna give all five companies a free table and five free passes. All five of you can come if they can make it out. If you can make it out. Awesome. Yeah. All five. Woo! All five. Um, all five are fantastic. Yeah. Rod I mean, I'm just so proud of this group. It, this yeah. is literally. And it keeps going up. I mean, we saw South Africa this, and then Korea. London and Paris. Every, all the other cities are got uh, yeah. got work to do. The Germans yeah. are on it. All right, let's have a brief uh, let's have a brief uh, speech from uh, each one of our winners. Brief, uh, brief. Uh, there, thank you so much, Jason, for explaining all of my <laughs> business plan <laughs> to nice all the guys work. out there. The camera works because, fantastic. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, thank you for the feedback and uh, lining out our business plan through the whole world and that it's really a bargain to pay 60 bucks a year to save a thousand or two thousand dollars of salary. Yeah. Um, yeah, thank you for that. Great. It's a brilliant idea. Um, okay, next. Let's hear from my toy box. Okay. My, thanks, my thanks, Jason, special. thanks, Tyler, um, yes. for, the, for this great rank. Yeah, awesome. Um, that was more than a that was more than a business pitch. It was also like a target group interview with you. Yeah, because you're one of, within yeah. our target group. So thanks yeah. for that. I got to um, tell you, I wanted the premium box. I would like to get a premium box every two weeks. <laughs> so if you could do every two weeks a forty dollar box, I'm, I would buy it. I seriously would. It'd be a thousand bucks a year. I'd do it. I know you would. What's more important than my daughter's education? And she will love that the box comes every two weeks. Right? I yes. mean, you have, to, you have to have these options of ramping it up a little bit for the big people. All right, let me talk to my, um, let me talk to our host here. Roddick, are you there? Yes, we're here. Okay, Roddick, you did a spectacular job. I can't believe you guys had 19 companies here all day. That's absolutely fantastic. I am absolutely thrilled with the five, the top three, and of course yeah. the top two. Thank you guys. Really well done. Um, yeah, and I mean, w w I did not do this alone. Um, I had a great uh, co-organizer, uh, Lutz, um, and uh, Nico. Uh, I'd like to get, just shout out to uh, the sponsors. Yeah, Ahoy, so, Ahoy Berlin. Berlin. Ahoy Berlin. Ahoy Let's Berlin, which is a Ahoy. great co-working space. Awesome. You know, and um, I'll take a desk. I'll take a like, desk. I want a, and, uh, I want a desk reserved like for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Kinder Fee for sponsoring the beverages. Thank you for Beer. the beverages. Delicious. Thank you. Uh, Tug's, Tug is on the boat for sponsoring some pizza and snacks. Awesome. And, uh, yeah, Zantera and Pro Digitalis for uh, sponsoring the tech and equipment. Awesome. Uh, second part, especially. Yes, uh, and so, good recovery on the uh, on the AV there. Yeah. Good job. Yeah, yeah. Sorry about that. And uh, our media partners, Tech Berlin and Venture Village. So thank you, everybody, and thank you, uh, Jason and Tyler, yeah. and uh, this weekend for awesome for showcasing us. And uh, let's make sure that everybody knows. Uh, F the Samoa brothers and long live German innovation. All right, so we're we're gonna get the uh, after party started now. All right, with uh, DJ Daddy Hemingway. So, <laughs> all right, DJ Daddy we'll, Hemingway, uh, play us out. <laughs> all right, play us Thanks, out, guys. DJ. We'll see you next time on this week in startups. Keep the DJ playing. Keep the DJ playing. Keep the DJ playing. All right, thanks, guys.